Hey everybody and welcome back to another video here at Whiteboard Madison. We appreciate you checking it out. Hopefully everybody's having a good day today. We uh, hope everyone's ready to learn about D5W, dextrose in water, the topic for today. Uh, this is part of our intravenous, intravenous IV fluid series. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of videos uh, that we've been coming out with. We have them all linked in a playlist in this video's description on IV fluids. And today we'll be talking about D5W. What is D5W? Clinical uses for D5W. Distribution, osmolarity, contraindications and cautions, common myths, clinical pearls, and more. For those of you interested, um, we are trying to uh, buff up our uh, Patreon community. So we have a link in this video's description to our Patreon page. There's both free membership as well as tiered membership. We'll upload the study guide for this video as well as practice questions. And there's a bunch of stuff on there, you know, ad-free videos, study guides, practice questions, daily public health updates, some of just our musings on medical education and public health stuff. So we're trying to build that community. We'd love for you to check it out, join all that good stuff if you feel inclined. We will stop shamelessly um, plugging our Patreon Patreon page, and we'll do a quick 30 second break for introduction, then we'll dive into D5W. Hey everybody and welcome to Whiteboard Medicine. We appreciate you checking out the video. Here at Whiteboard Medicine, our goal is to create medical education content for all types of interested learners. That includes videos, practice questions, study resources, and much more. We would love for you to join our community by subscribing, hit that bell button. We're also working to build a high yield Patreon page. It's going to be full of practice questions, video outlines, notes, commercial free content, and much more. None of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read this disclaimer its entirety before moving on. All right, D5W, also known as dextrose and water. So introducing D5W, D5W is 5% dextrose in water. That's where you get the 5. There can be D10W. There can be D20W. This is always the percent of the dextrose in the water. D5W is a hypotonic IV solution, right? Tonicity, we've done a whole video on just tonicity. Check it out if you want more information. But when you have a cell membrane, the tonicity drives which direction the free water travels. If you are hypotonic, that means the tonicity outside of the cell is less than inside the cell. And water will go from hypotonic areas to hypertonic areas. Whereas if you are hypertonic, that means the tonicity outside the cell is more than inside the cell. So water will travel from inside the cell to the outside of the cell. So this is hypotonic. So this is D5W is traveling into the cell, which we'll talk more about. This provides free water and a small amount of glucose, right? Dextrose, commonly used for hypoglycemia and treating hypernatremia. This is, this is key here. This is not for volume resuscitation because barely any of it stays in the intravascular space, which we will talk more about. What is D5W? As we mentioned, D5W is a solution of dextrose, which is glucose, sugar, and sterile water, okay? It contains 50 grams of glucose per liter of water, right? 5%. And this can be adjusted. It could be D10W, it could be D20W, as we mentioned. This does give you a little bit of caloric intake. Really not much at all, though. I've heard, I've never verified this fact, but I've heard people say it's less than a Snickers bar. Um, so this is not a lot of calories, but it is a little bit of calories. It is initially isotonic. So you're saying, what? You already said it's hypotonic. Now you're saying it's isotonic? But that is because the glucose in it, when it first goes into the vein, that glucose in it makes it isotonic. But that dextrose is quickly metabolized when you have insulin circulating, and then the solution becomes hypotonic because what's left is literally sterile water, free water, H2O, high quality H2O. This provides free water for distribution across all body compartments. So let's talk about that, body compartments. So we've done a whole video on fluid compartments linked in that video, uh, in that playlist. So check that out if you want a more tailored fluid compartments video. Here, we're just going to talk about a couple things quick. When we think about fluid compartments in the body. There's two main ones. There's the intracellular compartment inside of the cells. And this makes up the bulk of where fluid goes. 66% of fluid in the body is intracellular inside the cells. There's then the extracellular compartment, the area outside of the cells. And this represents about 33% of all fluid in the body. But within the extracellular space, there's both intravascular, okay? And this makes up about 25% 
of the 33%, and then there's extravascular outside of the blood vessels in that kind of interstitium. And this makes up 75% of that 33%. Now, if we do the math quick, that means the intravascular space is about 8% of the total fluid in the body, right? 25% of 33%, and that'll be important. So when we think about this, if we were to draw it out in a diagram, we were to draw kind of this rectangle, we would say, well, 66%, as we said, is intracellular. So you have to cross a cell membrane, right? This is the cell membrane to get there. Whereas 33% is extracellular outside the cells. Cellular. But within that extracellular space, 25% or 8% of the total is intravascular and 75% is extravascular. Well, tonicity, tonicity determines what crosses intracellular. So when we have crystalloid IV fluid, this is things like uh, normal saline, lactated ringers. All these are isotonic. So their tonicity is the same as inside the cell. So they don't cross the cell membrane. They don't go into the intracellular space. They stay extracellular. And they do equate throughout the whole extracellular space, both intravascular and extravascular. So one liter of lactated ringers, 25% is going to be intravascular right? We'll stay in the intravascular space, 250 cc's. Whereas the other 750 cc's, even though it went into the intravascular space through an IV, it will equilibrate over the whole extravascular space. So 750 cc's will end up extravascular, okay? But none of that, all, none of that will go intracellular. All of it will stay extracellular because it has tonicity. But we just mentioned D5W, is hypotonic after that glucose is metabolized. So what that means is since it's hypotonic, it will actually cross, so you put it in the IV, right? You give a liter, a D5W, into the IV, into the intravascular space. Well, that will equilibrate with both the extravascular space as well as the intracellular space, which means if you give one liter a D5W, only 8% of it, 80 cc's, will stay intravascular, right? Because it will equate throughout all spaces, including this huge intracellular space, which is why this is, it distributes across all body compartments, and it is not a resuscitative fluid, right? Because none of it stays, very little of it stays in the intravascular space. So what are the clinical uses then? Well, hypo, hypernatremia, high sodium. This is great because you're literally giving free water to dilute out that sodium. Hypoglycemia, obviously D5W has 5% dextrose, so it can help with hypoglycemia or low sugars. Uh, lots of medications have D5W in it. And then some people think about using it as a maintenance fluid um, because it does contain a little bit of glucose. We're not a huge fan of this uh, because it is, at the end of the day, a bunch of free water, so it will lead to lower sodium. Um, but some people do use it. Again, not medical advice, opinion, education. Uh, not suitable for volume resuscitation. Why is that? Well, as we said, it distributes outside the intravascular space. So it goes extravascular and it goes intracellular which means at the end of the day, if we just do the math, only about 8% stays intravascular, or 80 cc's from one liter. You also don't want to use it if there's intracranial hypertension um, because the hypotonicity of it can lead to worsening cerebral edema. All right, distribution. Dextrose is rapidly metabolized, and then this D5W becomes free water, becomes hypotonic. It distributes across the intracellular space, which we said is 66% or two-thirds, and the extracellular space, 33% or one-third. And then that will leave only about 8%, as we said, in the intravascular space. Of the extracellular component, 25% remains intravascular. 25 of the 33. Look at that. We are being repetitive, but we're doing it intentionally because this is a really important concept. Um, isotonic initially, 252 milliosms per liter. 
Uh, body is about 290 milliosms per liter, um, but once that dextrose is metabolized, it becomes rapidly hypotonic. Contraindications and caution, avoid using in those with elevated ICP, right? Hypotonic, we said that means that the fluid travels into the cells. If you have cerebral edema, you don't want a bunch of fluid traveling inside the swollen uh, intracranial cells. Uncontrolled diabetes, this will increase your serum glucose because it has 5% dextrose. Hypovolemia or shock, this does not stay inside the blood vessel. It's an ineffective intravascular volume expander. Monitor for hyperglycemia and electrolyte imbalances, particularly low sodium. Sometimes we're rounding and we're like, someone's sodium keeps going down, why? And then we notice that someone had started them on D5W and continued it. So something to be cautious of, hyperglycemia and hyponatremia. Common myths about D5W, that it is isotonic and safe for resuscitation. This is absolutely not true. Don't do it. Don't do it. It provides substantial nutrition. It does provide a little bit of calories, and we should have verified this. Someone let us know. But we have heard that it's less than a Snickers, less than the calories in a Snickers. Um, myth number three, it's harmless water. No, it can cause low sodium. It can cause cerebral edema. These are all things you have to be really careful, especially in really sick patients. All right, clinical pearls. Use cautiously in patients at risk for cerebral edema. Great for delivering free water or medications. Monitor glucose and sodium levels at all times. And consider other maintenance fluids for long-term use because it will slowly drop your sodium. If we look at a chart summarizing the properties, initially 252 milliosms per liter. But once that glucose is metabolized, it becomes rapidly hypotonic, low tonicity. As we just said, Calorie content, about 170 kilocals per liter, but this is very low. This is not enough to nourish someone, although it does provide some calories, right? Albumin doesn't provide calories. Normal saline, well, it doesn't provide nutrition. Lactated ringers, plasma light, no uh, nutrition. So it does provide a little nutrition. Main use, free water for things like hypernatremia, and then glucose for hypoglycemia. Avoid use. We've talked about that a whole bunch. Distribution, it mostly goes intracellular. Only 8% stays in the intravascular space. And it is a very poor intravascular volume expander for that reason. All right, we flew through that. Hopefully that was interesting, helpful. Let us know what thoughts, comments, questions you have down below. Definitely check out our playlist with the other IV fluid videos. Definitely check out our Patreon page if you'd like. We'd love for you to. Um, although we can't say definitely, I suppose. Uh, but in any case, stay well, keep learning, and we will see you all next time.